Hi everyone, today I thought it would be fun to have a go at this starfish. This is from Millie Morotta's Secrets of the Sea, her newest book, and uh, I thought I'd have a go. There are eight different starfish on this page. I've just picked this one because it just um, fits nicely the end of the camera, I guess. Um, I'm going to be using my polychromos pencils. I have been using those a lot lately, but they're just um, what I happen to have on my desk. So I thought I would have a go with those. What I'm going to do is start with these greeny parts around the outside and um, the leaves. I mean, I'm going to do them in green and then we're going to do the starfish after. So I'm going to start, I think, with some um, phthalo greens. Um, let's have a think. Let's do the dark phthalo green if I can find it. Here he is. He is um, a little small. But what I will talk you through is one of these... Um, leaf shapes now we had this is going to be my darkest green so i'm going to start do the stalk and or stem of this plant with that to start with and i'm going to take it all the way up to the point of the leaf you can see it's we've got this little um piece and now the leaf comes obviously we are got it's underneath the starfish but that's okay um, so I'm going to just do that and I'm going to do all the sort of stalky bits in this colour. So we've got quite a few around the page. So I'm just going to do them all the same. And we have these this piece as well which is I've done as a sort of part of the stalk. I'm not really sure what these plants are. Millie has been great in her book and I can't see that and told us what the names of the creatures are but I'm not sure she's given us all of the plant names on every page, she has for some but uh, I know these are obviously based on real plants but actually in the last page I did from this book I didn't worry about what the real um, items look like I just had a go myself and had some fun with it so uh, that's what I shall probably do here as well. Not worry too much about whether it's the right colour. Um, if you want to, you can look it up in the back and it will tell you what it is and then you can um, go onto your computer and look up that item and uh, copy the colours. But uh, I might do that for some of the pictures. Um, that's fine, but I'm not used to doing that um, all the time. If I'm doing like something that's drawn in a really realistic way, then I probably want to make it look as realistic as possible, but I'm not uh, quite up for that today. So I'm just doing it quite random. So uh, all of these bits in this the sort of darkest colour that I picked might go darker. I could grab a darker one, but I'm just... Uh, just happy with that and I'm just checking carefully to make sure I haven't missed any. I don't think I have but you know you never know I might have to come back so that was the dark phthalo green I'm going to use the phthalo green next I've got to find it though um, yeah there it is look huge um, I had a job, I had to sit, it just says 6-1, it's 161, so I knew it was it. What I'm going to do for these leaves is I'm going to use a different, a few methods. I'm going to do a darker bit of green here at the, at the sort of tip. And then reduce the amount of layers of green and eventually just fade them away. Like this. And the idea is to get the fade as even as possible it's a little bit dark there so you don't get a sort of obvious stripe when you change color it's not easy it takes a lot of practice now here the leaf is turned over so i'm going to start again there with the dark maybe a little bit on the tip there we'll just leave that now this one we haven't got the tip of the leaf but we've got the underside now I'm just going to put a bit of colour down here, but a bit lighter than there because some of the tip, if you imagine the tip starts here, so we're already getting to a lighter area by the time we get this far up. Um, sometimes the underside of a leaf might be slightly grey or a slightly different colour 
to the rest of the leaf to the top or it might be sort of fluffy and the top is more waxy it all depends on the type of leaf it's quite fun if you're out and about observing to sort of look at the undersides of leaves as well especially if you if you're near a tree and you can grab the leaf you can just turn it over gently and see what it looks like on the other side unless it's autumn like it is here it might just pop off in your hand because things are falling um, I'm going to what I've decided is to make that a little bit more grey I'm going to use a layer of grey grey green this is the earth earth green which is quite grey and I'm actually going to go over the undersides of all of the leaves with this and then that will change their colour just slightly so I'm just trying to do a fairly even layer. I'm not very good at doing even like that. Now this one is turned over, remember? It's better if you do the layers in the right order. But, you know, I've done it now. Um, trying to work out what's going on with this one. That's, that's the underside and that's the top. So we're going to colour this bit with this colour. this mm. so here again we've got a bit and then it turns and then it turns again I'm thinking this is the underside it doesn't really matter what you choose as long as you make a decision because I don't think this is symmetrical um, on the leaf part so it doesn't matter I'm going to leave that to the top I'm going to assume this is the underside on here just differentiates a little bit and makes it a little bit more interesting oh I've got an Arteza advert on my computer screen and uh, it keeps flashing and changing it's catching my eye it's um it's got lots of pencils flashing back and forth I haven't actually got many Arteza pencils I'm gonna use, make that bit the underside um I've got their um, premium set which are the triangular ones in the tub I quite like those actually I like they've got some really pretty colours and they're quite vibrant, um, which is nice. If you're in the mood for not pressing too hard, they're really good. Now this one, um, I'm going to do the tip. And I think we might be done then. I'm just going to check. Oh, we've got to be the stem there. I think we're done. I'm going to grab the um, dark fallow green just to do that with the stem while I remember. So anyway, these are the um, Arteza Expert, which I've never tried. So I'm going to continue around with these, with what I was doing. So as it comes from here, I'm going to shade it a little bit, bring in some shadow colour. And you think there'll be some shadow here, where it overlaps a little bit. Put that there, and a little bit on the tip, just because. And the same here, a bit on this tip and that tip. So the tiniest bit now this actually swaps over so I'm going to put a bit of colour there and on that tip there and then a little bit in here yeah I haven't tried the Arte's Expert they are on my wish list um, I don't know what they're like really I know they are a budget pencil but I've got nothing against budget pencils I know I'm using my polychromos today and they are obviously expensive but uh, um, that's not to say they're definitely the best. With regards to value for money, there are some very, very good sets out there. So if you can't afford the polychromos, there are other sets which you could probably um, get almost the same results from. So I'm not really explaining what I'm doing, but I hope you can just see that I'm doing the same sort of thing on each leaf. And hopefully it will be done quite soon and we can get onto the actual... Um, starfish but because the starfish is the star of the show as it were I wanted to make sure that he looks cool and stands out from the background so I thought it would be wise to do this background bit first and there's something else we have going on in this background of these little circles which are obviously bubbles now you could do a blue background around here and colour these white or bubbly you know it's like see through or like they're reflecting light or all sorts of fancy ways to do bubbles 
Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but I'm not going to do anything ultra fancy. I'm not sure. now I'm going to use my light phthalo green. This is a really light colour. I think it might be fun. And with these areas where we've already put some dark, I'm just going to go over it first and then um, do the rest and it helps to blend it in together nicely. I'm actually basically just going to put this over every leaf now, over everything and uh, just hopes to, it's quite, oops, it's quite a light colour which I think is quite vibrant and fun. I thought it might work nicely behind our starfish. Now starfish colours is what I'm now thinking about as I just jollily finish off these leaves. Um, there can come in, I'm always, always, always tempted to do them yellow and uh, that might be the way I go today. This one has got a nice pattern on him so that's quite interesting. Um, I might pick that pattern out a little bit. With these leaves I'm sort of ignoring the crisscross pattern that's on here. You can see that now we've had that grey green background this bit is going a bit darker and it definitely looks different to here which was the effect that I wanted. But we have got this sort of slightly leafy pattern on the starfish which I'm not going to ignore. It's quite pretty so we might um, use that to uh, make us make a nice colour. I wonder if when I finish it I might look up this type of starfish, see what it actually looks like and whether I have got it anywhere near. I'm not sure how easy it is to tell which is which. I haven't looked in the back that well. I know Millie would have put the names of each of the ones that she's featured but I don't know what sort of order. Whether this, because there's four on the left page and this is the first one on the right page, whether it will be number five. I don't know. I'm sure she's logical and has probably done it like that. So anyway, I may not look it up. So I may just think, ugh, did it completely wrong? But I don't normally get worried about things like that though. I know that this sort of thing should be about creativity. And uh, I always say I'm not at all creative. It's really my husband laughs. He says, you're a freelance writer and you colour. How can you say you're not creative? <laughs> I can't draw. I uh, I can't um, imagine things. I've got um, I can't picture things in my head, so I can't do that. I uh, I'm not very good at writing stories. My uh, freelance writing is non-fiction, so it's that sort of facts about things and stuff like that. So uh, I just think I'm not very creative. But we'll see. I can hear something outside. I don't know if it's a van. I am expecting a delivery at some point, but I don't know which day. I thought it would have arrived by now, but it's coming from America. And I'm not sure. I suspect that the postal service is varied across different states, um, depending on how shut down they are. Oh, I don't know if you've got any lockdowns there, actually, at the minute not sure but there might be people off work ill presumably or isolating etc like there is here in the UK but anyway we don't want to talk about that it's uh, but we'll see when my parcel might arrive it just makes it more exciting when it takes longer to reach you because I don't actually know what to expect I'm not going to reveal anything either so you'll just have to wait and see and watch future videos and see if you find out what it was so it's very naughty of me, isn't it? But anyway, I'm just colouring. As you see, there's no skill to this. I'm just trying to get a nice even amount of colour on each leaf and uh, increase the brightness and vibrancy of them. Now, I am thinking to myself, maybe I should do the starfish and purple and pink to make it really stand out. But uh, I'm not sure if my head's going to allow me to do that trying to get my angle right so you can see. It's no good me, I just want to put my hand there, you wouldn't be able to see it, would you? Sometimes I go out the lines because I'm colouring in a bit of an odd way, but I go out the lines when I'm colouring when I'm not on camera, so it isn't just uh, the camera. Right, we're nearly done, I think. 
Now you could of course do these different colours, although they're all the same type of leaf by the looks of the shape etc. It doesn't mean you have to be bound by that, you know, and also green. I'm very boring. Green leaves, you know, you could do them any colour. Could be a lot more adventurous. And I don't know whether leaves under the sea are uh, are green anyway, whether they're different colours. I've never done anything like deep sea diving or anything like that. I've got no idea what the colour... I mean, I've obviously seen a few programmes and uh, filmed under the sea, but I haven't really taken much note. Maybe I should start to do that. That's that. Now, let me see. Have we done them all? I think so. Now, you might like to spend more time doing that and... Uh, get um get it a little bit neater and uh, a little bit deeper color you know like i am now i'm just doing a second layer on some of them and it's amazing what a difference it can make polychromos tend to like being layered up there and bet it's better to do that than to try and press hard and get it down in one layer it doesn't really work with polychromos but also means that if you're pressing more lightly, if you make a mistake, you can wrap it out and uh, or go over it with something else a bit more easily. Um, I'm just going to go over that one. You know why I'm doing this in so much detail? Because I am procrastinating doing that starfish. I still haven't decided what colour it's going to be. Right, I think I'm just going to have to put my pencil down and go for it. But, uh, going to finish this now because I've started going over it. Right. Okay, let's grab some colours. I'm just going to grab my tray of colours because they're, they're not near me. Okay. What I think... Hmm... Yes, I'm going to start with this orange glaze and do the sort of background. I'm not going to do this line. I'm going to do this internal part here. So all of this bit here in the orange glaze. Wow, that's vibrant, isn't it? And I'm going to try and press quite hard or do quite a few layers to get it looking really bright and sort of neon -y. So you could use a neon orange if you've got something similar. Any bright orange would do for this. You certainly don't need this very specific colour. I know um, Johanna Basford always says when she does a tutorial, she doesn't tell people the colours. She wants you to use your own imagination. But I know that sometimes I look at someone's picture and I want to know what X colour or Y colour is because it's so pretty but uh, that doesn't mean that that just because I tell you you have to you that I'm using X colour that you have to use it you don't do what you want you might prefer something a little bit more red or a little bit um, less bright or just pink or purple you know would be fun. I'm just going to sharpen this because it's got such a little bit of detail. There we go. And uh, keep going. Now we've got these little leaf-like shapes which are quite attractive. I'm certainly not going to do those green because we've got the green leaves behind. Um, I'm going to do something which will hopefully stand out not fade back. If we did them green, they might just fade back into the green we've got already. So, I'm uh, just going to keep going. There's quite a lot here to do, isn't there? I hope you don't get too bored watching me colour. But uh, anyway, I don't know what to tell you about. What can I tell you about? Um, um, I can tell you that um, Johanna Bassett has got a new book coming out soon. Um, She's got her new um, weekly planner out, which I have probably will have received by the time this video comes out, and I probably would have done a flip through of it. Um, but my intention is to do a page every Monday, like I am doing this year, 
it seems to be quite a popular um, choice. Um, it seemed, the Monday videos seem to be quite well watched, so I'm assuming that you like that. So I was going to keep up with doing that. Um, it's just a pity there aren't any from Worlds of Wonder in it, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, so it's going to keep up with doing that. But she's got her new 30 Days of Creativity. Now, I was tempted to, as soon as I got it, all through, because it comes out on the 30th of October, I think, in the UK. It does have different release dates in different parts of the world. And I was thinking, oh, from the 1st of November, I could do a 30-day thing where I do a video each day from the book. But I am slightly reluctant because there's going to be drawing in it. I know it. And uh, drawing is not my thing. When I bought her How to Draw Inky Wonderland's book, I did have a go. I've got done a flick through, flip through, actually, so you can see. I did try to do the drawing. I followed her. She did her Inky Art School. I did that with her, and I did had a really good try at it. I just felt like I owed it to her to have a go. But for me, drawing isn't as relaxing as colouring. And I feel like I've still got loads to learn with my colouring. And I don't, I'm not really ready to learn something new on top. You know, some people learn quite quickly and they are happy. My husband is, like, he he will have a go at, at the moment he's in an ink and wash phase. So he'll do, um, draw with his um, permanent black marker and then go over with watercolour to colour up. Um, he used to just do watercolour with no ink. Um, before that he was doing coloured pencils. He'd just gone through a watercolour pencil phase and all that sort of thing. But because he doesn't stick at something for a really long time, I feel that he doesn't give himself a chance to practice a lot. He has a lot less time to do it than I do. Because I work from home, I don't have a commute, so it saves me a lot of time. I also um, don't work full time. He works full time and he has a, a commute of sort of 30 to 60 minutes, depending on traffic. So that's quite a lot in the day. He's working from home a lot, as he is today, actually. Quite a lot now, which he likes. At times, he does like seeing his colleagues and going in, but it's rather nice at times if he can be at home. So I'll just check you can see you can. So anyway, he um, um, he doesn't get as much free time as I do. He also has other hobbies, which I don't. I have one TV show that I like to watch, but um, I tend to, it's not on all the time. And uh, I sometimes colour while I watch it anyway, it depends. And uh, that's a wall, you see. I like walking, I get a bit of exercise, but that just inspires me for colouring often, which is nice. And uh, that's me. So I have no other hobbies. I don't read anymore, really. I uh, Obviously I cook for the children and for myself, which I like doing, but all my meals take half an hour or less. I'm very fast at cooking and preparing food um, because... I don't eat meat, um, just because I don't like it. Um, I, it seems to be quicker to sort of cook veg and meat and things like that. And I've just been cooking since I was very young, so I'm just quick, which is nice. So well, that's all I do really, apart from the housework. And I only do that once a week or so. So I have lots and lots of time for colouring, which is Fabulous, I'm very, very lucky. And uh, and it's a lot of fun. So it means that for me, I get lots of practice because I always tend to use pencils occasionally. A little bit of pen here and there, not loads. Um, I have been thinking of getting some gel pens for details and things, but, you know, I, I tend to... Um, just use pencils most of the time. I think we might do something with pen on this picture in a minute. But I might change my mind or completely forget the other. 
that I've got an identical twin sister and she was just telling me earlier that she's getting she's not sure if she's getting forgetful or if she's deaf um, she her hearing is, hasn't been very good for a while but she ha knows she needs to get it sorted but it's just one of those things you know she's got four children two of them are quite little she works five days a week full time and uh, it's very busy so it's just trying to fit it all in right what I'm going to do now for the for this edge piece here and this furry bit I'm going to use this light cadmium red it's quite an orangey red and I want to make a sort of texture here so I'm doing quick circles I want it to look sort of um, bushy no um, I don't know the word that I'm trying to say I don't know so it's going to be quite quick but I want it to look textured so if I go quickly I will leave behind white paper and it will look more textured when I say bushy I mean like a bush you know like like it's sort of textured in that sort of way like it's woolly almost I suppose nice and quick as well isn't it? but anyway she um, she said she doesn't know she doesn't think she's losing her memory she thinks people just tell her things and she doesn't hear them. And I said, oh, is that just the children? They may have not really told you. you know, mine, mine seem to think I know what they do when they're out. You know, obviously, obviously I know. You know, oh, didn't you know that, Mum? No, I wasn't there. Oh, oh no. Mm -hmm. Anyway. <laughs> so uh, for these bits, I'm just going to do a back and forth motion. I want them to be slightly at an even in length and quite scruffy because that's what I think they will be like. But uh, anyway, I don't, I'm don't. i going a little bit deaf, but I don't know if I just need my ears unblocked or if there's something more to it, but I need to go and get it checked out. But it's usually, um, I'm standing in the kitchen right next to the kettle which is boiling and the kids come in and go mom you didn't hear me I'm like, no you weren't in the room and the kettle was boiling in my ear you're deaf I'm like no <laughs> no no but I have noticed that um I can't hear the crickets anymore the really high-pitched crickets chirping and which I used to be able to hear but I don't need that range that little bit made louder I can't imagine that they could just bring back that one sound and uh, it, although it's a shame they used to be absolutely deafeningly loud uh, it's been quite it, suddenly it just disappeared it didn't seem to get quieter it just vanished it's quite strange although of course um i didn't go along that area for, for a year during lockdown right these leafy shapes and deal with those next um hmm I'm going to use this colour. It is, I've got to identify it. It is dark chrome yellow. I'm just trying to sharpen it. You'll see why I'm struggling in a minute. There it is. It's called dark chrome yellow. It looks quite orangey to me. It does in the camera as well. So don't think that you're seeing the wrong colour. You're not. If you've got the um, polychromos, you'll know. So I'm going to do the centres and then fade like this. It's quite orangey, I know. We're going to go over it with a yellow to brighten it. I just don't want all of these being the same colour. So I'm doing the centre parts in this colour. Now this is my first ever Millie Morota book. I was very kindly gifted this. Um, by Frances, it's lovely, and uh, she's given me quite a lot of books, she's very, very kind, and um, so I wasn't sure what to expect, 
but um, it's been lovely. I haven't coloured loads of it yet. I've had a sudden, I've sort of got, um, I had two, three books in, two or three new books in May, and then I had in September, I had one, two, three, four new books. So it's been quite tricky finding the time to um, get into all of them, despite the fact that I want to colour every page of every book immediately. I, uh, I haven't been able to do that. So uh, I'm just taking it easy and gently because I don't want to rush through the books and, you know, spoil them by just colouring madly. And uh, I also decided to relax a little bit. I used to feel that I needed to finish every single book and sort of challenge myself to do that. Now I've finished every single one of Johanna Basford's books and um, I, uh, I've started second copies. Some of them I've finished two copies and um, I've, in the middle of one at the minute, A Magical Jungle, and I'm getting closer to the end and I had sort of thought I want to finish this. But I've decided to relax and not worry too much. I know I will finish it, but it's not really a race. I was going to try and finish it before Worlds of Wonder came out and I just couldn't. And uh, so now I've got lots of books to choose from. I'm just going to try to not get myself thinking too much about finishing but just enjoying and of course I enjoy books and I enjoy colouring but sometimes my brain my sort of completest brain takes over and tells me that I need to finish and of course I don't and I have to keep reminding myself that I don't need to finish this is dark cadmium yellow now hopefully I've got many 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 years of colouring left where I could have lots of opportunity to enjoy all my books and I'm going right over the top of the whole thing here and it will help the colours to blend together and it's I purposely wanted this really lovely vibrant warm yellow I think this is my favourite yellow I do find yellows very very energising and warm lovely it's quite autumnal yellow like this and actually that's the time of year it is at the moment. I think we shouldn't have to colour according to the season. In fact, that's not always a good way to be. If you're feeling cold on a winter's day, don't colour a winter picture, you'll feel even colder. Colour a sunny picture, warm yourself up. Imagine you're somewhere warm and cosy. The only thing I find tricky is colouring Christmas pictures any other time of the year. Um, it doesn't, I'm, my head isn't in the right place for it. But I guess it'll be upon us soon enough. It's going to be October soon and we'll all start thinking about it and talking about it. And I know people say, oh, it starts too early, everyone's talking, but I don't mind. I can't blame shops for trying to encourage us to shop early. They want the reassurance that they're products are going to be bought and they're going to have money coming in and they want the money early so they can go and buy things for their children and their loved ones. Yeah, I was actually thinking about it just the other day, maybe making a little start. I usually start at half term. Half term is towards the end of October. I think it starts on the 25th in um, my son's college. I was having a look this morning because he, um, he wants to be a helicopter pilot. And uh, I want him to go and fly in a helicopter before he um, decides on his future, just in case he decides it isn't for him. I have a feeling it will make him even more enthusiastic, but that's okay. But um, I, uh, I'm just trying to organise him a flight. It's quite expensive. It's £195, and um, he gets 30 minutes um, with a obviously a qualified instructor and he gets the opportunity to do a little bit of flying himself the only the there's a couple of huge problems being a helicopter pilot where i'm concerned one is that you have to pay to learn to fly and it is more than twice the cost of paying for a degree at university 
and there's no loan so you have to find the money yourself so that's 70 plus thousand pounds he's got to find in order to do it the second um, concern I have is that there aren't loads and loads of jobs the place he's going to which is a flying school teaches people to fly yeah he could do that but he would have to own his own helicopter in order to teach people and obviously there's an expense there as well so uh, it's uh, it's an interesting idea but we'll see okay now we've got the bubbles left and I've got an idea for those I'm not going to do a background what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the bubbles blue oh, this is called cobalt green it's a turquoisey colour Mm, is it a bit too close to the leaf colour? Yeah, no, I'm not going to use that, sorry. It's changed my mind. It's a bit too green. Let's use the Helio Turquoise. It's a bit more blue. It's going to sharpen it. What I'm going to do is just fill each bubble space with this. Easy peasy. I'm going to do quite a dark application because I want to put some white pen on it when it's done. And white pen is going to show up a lot better if we've got a dark colour and a nice thick um, amount. I do find some people will um, find that, say, oh, my white pen just doesn't work. And sometimes white pens aren't very good. I have, got, I have had experience of some that don't work. But mostly it's because if you haven't got a really thick um, layer of pencil underneath, there's the pen just doesn't show up because you've got paper, white paper showing through. The pen just disappears um, because you can see the paper. You can't differentiate between white paper and pen. And it's almost like you're using your pen on your actual white paper. And the same applies if you use quite a pale colour. Even if you have a thick application of that colour, it just might not be um, dark enough to show up the pen. So just a little tip for anyone. It could be that your pen's rubbish. Um, the best way to test that is to get some black and uh, in different brands of pencil, if you've got different brands, and do a thick black circle, rather like I'm doing here, black, and then try your pen. Scribble it first on a scrap and then try drawing on top of the black. You may find with some pencils it picks up the pigment of the pencil or the wax or oil and it will gunk up the pen so you might have to scribble on rough every so often to get rid of that but it'll be a good test to see whether it really is the pen that's the problem or whether it's the pencil or something else now it's also worth noting that with a Posca pen you have to shake it up um, it's a Posca white not only do you shake it up you can it's got something in it to move the paint around but see the nib, you have to pump the nib up and down to get the paint out. You do that on the scrap piece of paper before you start. Now pens like this, this is a jelly roll, sometimes, I don't think this one does, have a cover over the end of the roller ball. And uh, so they don't work until you've removed that cover. So that can sometimes be problematic. What I'm doing now is just adding a little shine to my bubbles. Now an alternative way of doing this background will be to do the whole of the background in the dark blue including the bu uh, bubbles and then going over with white making the bubbles white after or just a circle of white or something like that but I didn't want to do a huge big background so I thought I would keep it simple. Just checking I've done them all but there we go. I'm just going to leave that there. I uh, think that's enough for me. You could, of course, as well, go over it with a bit of blue pastel just to uh, give a little bit more of a tinge to the paper. But as I say, that's me done. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video and happy colouring.